Mariana is the country where the protagonist is from. It is a place with a clear border between north and south. The southern region has a mild climate and is good for farming. The northern part, on the other hand, has harsher conditions. However, the military power is significantly prevalent. At first, the two regions seemed to cooperate well with each other. But a huge fire broke out, which was forever engraved in history and took the entire northern part with it, turning it into ashes. And the problem was this. The people were resentful that they would no longer be supplied with supplies, as most were now just dying. They thought it was inhumane. Southerners resented the fact that they were never once helped when they were in trouble. It was a war. And the center of the war was the main character named Margaret from the Just family and her former lover named Skull from the Rosti family. The girl was sitting alone on a hill reading a book. As someone called her name, the girl turned her head to see who had called her name. And she saw a blonde-haired young man in front of her. The girl immediately stood up and walked towards him, throwing herself into his arms. It was her beloved Mr. Skull. The man immediately apologized to the girl and asked how long she had waited for him, as it was quite difficult to get out. The girl laughed and said that she had only been here for four hours, and luckily Marin had helped her come. The girl admitted to Mr. Skull that she was willing to meet with him. The man asked the girl if even if she would be caught by a witch in the border forest. But the girl was sure that in that case, he would come and rescue her. The man noticed that the girl was reading The Little Mermaid. The girl liked this book very much because of its romantic story. After all, The Little Mermaid, like her, met a love that was dearer to her than life. She believed that there could not be a happier ending. Suddenly, the girl inquired of the man what he was doing here at such an early hour. Mr. Skull explained that everything was here because of the situation between the northern and southern region. The girl had remotely heard that these sides were at war with each other. The man warned the girl that for that reason they would not be able to see each other again. The girl didn't like this at all. She realized that it was a difficult time and they could barely see each other. Suddenly the man said that there was only one way. Only if Miss Margaret would hold tightly his hand. After which he took the girl's wrist and kissed it gently. The stunned girl agreed to such a condition. But suddenly the man shouted for the girl to be grabbed and two men appeared out of nowhere holding the girl tightly. Margaret, however, did not understand who these men were or what they were doing to her. She tried to get something out of Mr. Skull. The girl wouldn't stop begging to be let go. Then the man told the girl that he would never forgive her. Then Margaret was thrown into the water. In the depths of the sea, the girl heard someone's voice. That man would regret it, for he called the girl a witch. The voice promised her that he would give her a chance to come back. She didn't understand why he was telling her these things. She assumed it was simple interest, or perhaps a game or even a deal. But it didn't matter to her anymore. After all, whether this chance would be a stroke of luck or a new challenge for her was all up to the girl. Suddenly, Margaret was picked up by someone in her arms. She decided that this would be her second story. After a while, the sea threw the girl on land. She heard nothing at all, not the sound of footsteps coming to rescue her, nor a voice calling her. The realization of this chilled her soul more and more. The girl decided to get up out of the water and began to reflect on what had happened. She said that she should have died by taking poison and falling off the cliff. But it turned out that she was not only alive, but now she was a completely different person. The girl realized this when she looked at her reflection in the water. Suddenly, she heard someone's voice and turned around to see where the sound was coming from. She couldn't believe that the voice she heard was real. She didn't understand what it meant. Margaret assumed that this chance meant becoming something else. She wondered if there was anything left of her past. The girl had sneaked away from home to avoid being followed, crossed the northern border because she just wanted to see her lover so badly. But he ended up being a traitor who was going to kill an innocent girl. Margaret realized that she was still feeling the pain that set her throat on fire, making it burn like crazy. Tears came to the girl's eyes, after which she collapsed helplessly, not realizing why all this was happening to her. She thought that if someone wanted to give her a chance, why not just turn back time? She didn't understand what this being who gave her a second chance was trying to do. After all, she didn't wish for such a fate at all. The girl remembered her words that the Little Mermaid had met a love that was dearer than life. She realized that this was not a romantic story at all, 
but a horrible tale in which someone dies for the sake of a loved one. Her knees and neck hurt very badly, and she was shivering because of the cold, feeling as if she was going to die. The girl remembered her past life, as well as her parents, and wanted to go back to them very badly. She didn't know at all what would happen to her next, and she was worried that no one was there for her. She was in utter despair at the mere thought that no one wanted her. Suddenly, in the constantly approaching and receding waves, she saw foam. She doesn't know why it was the last scene from The Little Mermaid that suddenly came to her mind. At the end, the sun rose above the sea, and its rays lovingly warmed the dead cold sea foam. The girl realized that she was very tired, and spitting on the sand, fell asleep without strength. After a while, the girl woke up because of a bright light. She saw a man with a flashlight in front of her. Later, the girl woke up again because of the pungent smell of herbs. She saw a man in front of her who was just grinding them. The young man noticed that the girl was already awake. He did not understand how she had managed to survive at all. Margaret looked at the young man and did not understand who he was and why she was in such a dirty place. Only the girl wanted to say something, but realized that she had no voice at all. The man told her that he found her lying on the shore. He also thought she was dead and wanted to pass by to avoid getting into trouble. The young man said that they were now in the village of Bentley and that this was his home. The lad confessed that he had only picked up the girl because she was dying. The girl realized that if she was in the town of Bentley, it was somewhere on the border of North and South. The girl had heard that there was much controversy about this village because of the peculiar character of the inhabitants. Margaret realized that in any case, if she wanted to get to the North, she had to go through this place, and she always crossed it with fear. There was even a story going around about a witch living here, kidnapping people and performing experiments on them or making soup out of them. The girl was afraid that this man who supposedly saved her was doing the same thing. Margaret began to panic at the mere thought that this was a kidnapping and that she was now in great danger. The girl was contemplating about running away when suddenly the voice of the very same guy came out. The guy wanted to touch the girl, but she was flooded with memories of what her past lover had done to her, who had eventually betrayed her. She begged for someone to come and save her, but the guy didn't want to hurt the girl at all. He touched her forehead and determined that the girl had a very high fever. From such a close contact, Margaret immediately blushed. Then the young man realized that it was not surprising that she did not answer, and also assured the girl that he had not been treating her for so long, so he asked her not to worry. The girl noticed that all her wounds were bandaged and assumed that this guy wasn't a bad person at all. She decided that if he was good, then maybe she could use him. She wasn't at all sure how she should ask him, but then she remembered that if she couldn't talk, she could write, so she decided to use his hand. After that, she took the guy's palm, but she didn't immediately realize what question she should ask. So Margaret, for a start, decided that she would find out who he was, so she asked the guy what his name was. The guy apologized to the girl, but explained that he couldn't read at all. The girl was very much surprised to hear this, after which she was once again hit by a wave of despair. The boy explained that it wasn't that he couldn't read at all, just that he could read a little, but not enough to understand a sentence. The girl realized that it was likely that almost no one in this village could read. The guy immediately assumed the girl was from a more affluent neighborhood. The girl immediately shook her head negatively, but the guy immediately studied her. She had impeccably groomed hair and a white, beautiful face, and there wasn't a single callus on her hands. He figured she was definitely a noble lady. However, something was bothering him. He remembered that the girl's clothes were soaked through, and there were no shoes on her feet. Also present was a scar on her neck, as if she had been strangled. The guy reflected on the fact that even though he had healed her now, she still couldn't speak. Suddenly, a memory came over him of his friend calling him to inform him that the nobles had arrived and a fight had broken out, and his mother was there. But later, he came to his senses and decided that the nobles' business was none of his concern. Then the boy turned to the girl and warned her that since she had come to her senses, she should not stay here and go back to her home. For the girl, it was like thunder, as she had no place to go at all. And the guy in turn thought that the girl might have run away from her parents' house, but he thinks that this place is not for someone like her, who is used to living without worries. 
The guy asked the girl if she had ever slept in such a shabby place, and also apologized that his lodging was just disgusting, and also asked her not to say anything about her condition being better because of him, and also told her to get lost. The girl resented very much because of how rude this man had turned out to be. But really, she herself didn't want to stay in this hole for long. But it was still unpleasant that he had brought her here, and now he was kicking her out. The girl was angry that the guy judged her like that, even without knowing anything about her. So the girl decided to leave now, getting out of bed and heading for the door. He decided that with such an attitude, we'll definitely not stay here. At last, she gave the guy an angry glance, and then he slammed the door right in her face. So the girl found herself out on the street all alone again. She didn't know at all what she should do next. In the end, not daring to move even one step away from the guy's house, she sat and just cried. The young man decided to look out of the window and saw that the girl was still sitting there. Margaret was feeling very bad, as her fever was still up. Then the boy decided that he would do this. He handed the girl a bucket and a mop. The girl was dumbfounded, not understanding what she needed it for. Then the guy explained that of course it was none of his business, but if she didn't want to go home, then let her not expect to live here for nothing. And he who does not work will not eat. The girl was completely shocked after hearing this. After all, she used to lead a nobleman's life and did not know any worries at all. The guy ordered the girl to clean up and also informed her that he would come later and check. Margaret was very angry with this guy as she was still sick and he was ordering her to clean up. She felt that if only she had a voice, she would have said a couple of endearments to him a long time ago. The girl thought back to her past life and realized that she had never done any cleaning before and remembered her boyfriend's words that this was no place for someone like her who was used to living without a care. But she decided to start cleaning because everyone does it and there's no getting away from it. She didn't understand at all what she needed a broom for if she was going to wipe it with a rag anyway. The girl remembered the maid's words about using charcoal for cleaning sometimes. To begin with, Margaret began to mix the ashes in a bucket. Then she poured it on the floor. After that, the whole floor was wet, but the girl expected that it would dry somehow on its own. After all, it was ordinary water. The girl assumed that maybe she was an expert at cleaning in general. Margaret began to dust, but it was very clumsy. She almost fell a couple of times, dropping all the things on the shelves. She hadn't realized that cleaning was such a difficult process. Still, she was pleased with herself that she had finished everything perfectly, even though there was no less trash and the floor was wet. And at the same time, the girl had a very bad headache. She assumed that she felt worse because she had been outside for a long time. The girl decided to rest for a while, but because of the spilled water, she slipped and fell on a cabinet with books, after which they all fell to the floor. The girl turned her attention to the books lying on the floor. She realized that it was an even bigger mess now, despite having spent so much energy cleaning it up. She decided that she needed to fix it before that guy came back. Suddenly, a piece of paper caught her attention. The girl thought it was strange since the guy said he couldn't read at all. The girl started reading the letter. Margaret realized that the guy was writing about witches. It said that the witch was dead, and it meant that it was a peaceful time for them. After all, they had shed too much blood and lost too much. Margaret realized that this story was about a witch who almost destroyed a country and a hero who stopped the strife and saved the land. Margaret realized it was about the witch who had turned the North into a sea of fire seven years ago. But what was her surprise when she saw that the letter was signed Margaret Eustace, that is, by her past name. The girl was looking at the piece of paper and didn't realize what it was when suddenly the door opened and a boy entered the room. He asked the girl how she was doing with the cleaning. Suddenly he noticed that she was going through his things and he got very angry because he ordered her to clean. The guy wondered to the girl what was going on here, as she had no face on her at all. Then his gaze fell on the very sheet. He explained to the girl that it was an article about a witch named Margaret, and assumed that the girl was interested in the witch, but assured her that if it was accidental, there was nothing wrong with it. The young man assumed that the girl wanted to know what the article was about. The guy then revealed that he bought it because the story was about a witch, but ended up not being able to read it. The guy said that his mom used to work as a pharmacist and died as a witch. But it was a common story for the village. 
The young man also added that because of this, although she left a lot of books, he was never able to learn to read, but assumed that the girl would be able to read everything written there. The girl, on the other hand, still couldn't recover from the shock after reading it. The guy looked at the girl's face and it confused him even more. It also fueled his interest in what it said. Margaret realized that this story takes place after her death. After all, she was the witch who destroyed the North, and the hatred of the world was directed at her. And the war ended when the culprit died, and her lover who killed her became a hero. The girl read this sheet over and over again, and tears began to come to her eyes from not understanding what it all meant. She was frightened at the mere thought that her death was just for the sake of it. The boy watched the girl and didn't understand why she didn't say anything. But then his gaze fell on her neck, where a bandage was visible, and he realized that she had no voice. Then the guy offered the girl a bottle of some drink, as he thought that after it she should feel better. The girl was once again convinced that outside, everyone is like this. After all, until this moment, everyone was laughing and joking. But the girl hoped that her lover was different, and so she trusted him. But she did not understand why he became a hero by killing her, because in fact, he was not a hero, but a real murderer. Margaret realized that seven whole years had passed since that time, but she wasn't sure if she could believe this article to the end. The girl's headache grew even worse, becoming almost unbearable. Suddenly, a guy called out to her, reminding her that he had told her to drink that can. He noticed that the girl was getting more and more painful and asked her to take it as soon as possible, explaining that he had prepared the medicine himself. Everything was already starting to blur in front of the girl's eyes. The guy kept shoving the drink to the girl, but she just pushed him away, after which the can flew out of his hands. The girl was not going to drink, as her memories replayed the moments when her lover betrayed her and handed her the poison. Only after a couple of seconds did it dawn on the girl what she had done, and she realized that she hadn't meant it at all. Margaret decided that she should apologize and pulled the guy by the sleeve of his sweater. But in the end, she had no strength left at all, after which the girl fell unconscious. The girl remembered how a man came up to her and he was glad to see his precious guest, as they had not seen each other for a long time, Miss Margaret. The man had heard that she didn't go to such events, but he was still very happy that the girl was here. Margaret smiled politely, though mentally she didn't like being in this place at all because of the large amount of noise. The man assumed that the girl was very sensitive to sounds. Margaret didn't understand if he knew why he wouldn't just talk quieter. So the man suggested one good place, namely their mansion, so he wanted the girl to have a tea party with his son. Maybe he realized that he's really very noisy, so she doesn't go to those places. The girl was angry that her mom told her to take off her earplugs since it was rude, but the girl felt awful about the ringing in her ears. The other girls were discussing that the game of ignoring conversations on Margaret's part had started again. The girls were teasing that they should leave her alone since this precious guest didn't want to listen to them, so nothing could be done. The girls were sure that the information about her having very sensitive hearing was a lie. The girl realized that everyone was just talking about her, so she hurriedly left. The man was indignant, as he had expected it to work out. He decided that it was better to give up, because as soon as it was worth opening his mouth, the girl immediately closes her ears. The man was angry, because the girl does not realize that she will not be able to live like that at all. But the girl just hated all the sounds. Suddenly, the girl heard the sound of a piano, and her ears felt much better, because the sound was clear and beautiful. The girl turned around and saw a blonde-haired young man. She realized it was a man, obviously the son of the Rosti family, and his name is Skull. Margaret was entranced by his beauty and how well he played the piano. So the girl decided to walk over and speak to him first, saying that his performance was marvelous. The young man thanked the girl a little, but he felt that he still had a long way to go before his performance, as this playing was only one-handed. The girl didn't quite understand what the young man meant. Still, she explained that it didn't change how beautifully he played and enjoyed what was happening. This was her first time meeting Skull. The girl believed that this man was her destiny, but in the end, he just killed her. Margaret was bleeding out while the guy asked for her to come to her senses. 
he realized it was worse than he thought and wanted the girl to take her medicine sooner rather than later. But Margaret covered her mouth. The guy didn't understand at all why the hell she was refusing to take the treatment. Then, the young man decided to do so. He opened the jar and poured the contents into his mouth, after which he transferred the medicine with his lips directly to the girl's lips. Margaret became convinced that in this world, there is no such thing as fate. So she swore that she would never fall in love again. The next day, the girl woke up and realized that she was feeling much better. Margaret felt very rested, and also her throat and head no longer hurt so badly. The girl assumed it was because she had gotten a very good night's sleep. But still, her voice never came back to her. But Margaret did not lose hope. Suddenly, the girl noticed that the guy was sleeping sitting on a chair, and she didn't understand why this person was here. After that, the guy came to his senses. He looked at the girl and realized that judging by her appearance, she was much better, for it would be strange if the medicine didn't help her. Margaret assumed that he had slept here all night, but then she noticed the water dish and the rag and her bandaged neck. She realized that this guy had been taking care of her all night. Margaret felt guilty, but the guy noticed that she was acting kind of weird, so he asked the girl if she remembered what happened last night, but Margaret didn't know what he was talking about. Then the boy assured the girl that it was all right if she didn't remember. Then he glanced at her clothes and disheveled hair and didn't tell her to go wash up. But suddenly, a very shrill sound came from the girl's stomach, reminding her that she was hungry. So the guy suggested that she eat first. And here the girl felt kind of embarrassed. As breakfast, the guy suggested the girl to eat one potato. The girl realized that it was not exactly what she expected and began to look around for food. But the guy didn't understand at all what she was doing and told her to eat that potato. The girl for some reason thought that the guy was a liar and was hiding the food from her. The guy noticed the girl's reaction and told her that if she didn't like something she could always leave, that she didn't want it at all. The guy warned the girl in advance not to even dream of meat because here and potatoes are a great virtue. The guy admitted that he didn't know what made her fall there, but he had no intentions of pleasing the girl at all. Margaret got angry and began to gobble the potato in a showy manner. The girl suggested that it wasn't so bad, but the guy only laughed, as he reminded the girl that first it should be peeled. The girl immediately started spitting out pieces of potato from her mouth. The guy looked at the girl and thought about the fact that she would not eat it out of pride. He realized that he didn't think she was so stupid. The guy said that in other words, he was willing to keep supplying the girl with it and offered to make her a deal. The guy repeated that he wanted to read the books his mother had left him. But hardly anyone in this village is literate, and the girl needs a place to eat and sleep, and someone who can heal her throat, and he needs someone who can teach him to read and write. The boy promised the girl that if she helped him, he would definitely cure her. Meg thought about it and realized that it wasn't such a bad idea. After all, she still didn't know what she was going to do when she left here. It would be safer to stay at this guy's house, where she was being offered a roof over her head, sustenance. Of course, she realized that this man didn't inspire confidence in herself, but she still held out her hand as a sign of agreement. That said, the girl felt as if she had been left with no choice. The boy admitted that he would at least like to know her name. Margaret didn't understand at all how they could communicate if she couldn't speak, and he couldn't read at all. Then the boy suggested calling the girl by her nickname, and he began to think of a suitable name. The guy decided that since the girl was white, he would call her Belyash. The girl only responded with a judgmental look. The guy thought that this was some pointless venture and decided to remember the girls he had met before. The young man went through all the women's names and realized that it was still some nonsense because none of them fit. Suddenly, the guy decided that he would call the girl by the name Meg. The girl thought about it and remembered that some people really did call her that, and decided that this nickname would probably suit her. After all, if her lover found out that she was alive, he would come to kill her again. The guy saw that the girl liked her new nickname and decided that it was a real relief for him. He confessed that he was really looking forward to their collaboration. The guy introduced himself with the name Jack Rowland and also told her that he was the only pharmacist in the village. The girl was greatly surprised when she learned that this guy was a pharmacist. Meg decided that now, since she looks completely different, has pure white hair, 
is in a different environment and surroundings, and has a new name, the girl decided to see if she could find her new self in this. We still decided that as long as this person was still alive, she would remain Margaret. Just thinking about it made eating disgusting. The girl pondered the fact that Jack could give her a completely different name, but he would still only be someone who would pass by, lingering only for a moment. The girl decided that now the people around her were not so important to her. Suddenly, there was a loud knock on the door. A voice informed Jack that they were in trouble and asked him to come out quickly and informed him that the villagers were in danger. Jack gathered his bag and all the necessary items and herbs. He had to take Meg with him. The girl peered fearfully out from behind the guy's back, watching the injured people in pain. The boy asked the nurse what was going on here. Jack assumed the work of the Northmen. The girl didn't deny it and told him that they wanted to cut down all the trees, so they tried to stop them, and eventually what happened happened. The girl realized that their old habits had not changed, but there was nothing they could do because the Northerners had weapons and many soldiers. The guy considered them scoundrels and cowards. And then he decided to first examine the wounded and ask the girl who needed priority help. Only the guy wanted to step as the girl grabbed his arm to ask him who was the child next to him and why he brought her here. Jack explained that she was just an acquaintance of his who tails him everywhere. Even though they were mistaken, the girl heard them perfectly. And it was just scary to be alone in a stable like this. The nurse was indignant and tried to explain to Jack that no matter how it was, he should know that anyone but the villagers were forbidden to be here. Jack didn't want to argue, so he suggested that the girl get on with things as he was in a hurry, so he decided to start with the treatment. The nurse stared intently at the girl. Meg genuinely didn't understand what was wrong with being an outsider in the first place. Just as suddenly, she was being called out by Jack. He asked that the girl come over and help him. So the girl entered the room. Jack asked Meg not to count crows, but rather to bring him more clean rags, and also asked to boil water. At this time, the lad was engaged in dressing the wound. The girl was dumbfounded and did not understand why she had to do it. After that, Meg's gaze fell on the wounded man, and the girl barely restrained gagging. The girl was able to come to her senses only after Jack yelled at her and ordered her to quickly bring water and rags, with all her legs ran for the necessary things. Then Meg ran into a guy who was just the right guy to hold what she needed, but she couldn't tell him to give her the rags at all. At that, he asked the girl to back off because he was busy. Meg realized that she was going crazy because she couldn't communicate, and she didn't understand at all how to explain to her that she needed those cloths. So the girl decided to point to her dress in hopes that the guy would understand her. But all he did was think that she was some kind of weird kid. So the girl decided that she would boil some water first and ran in the other direction. On the way, the girl thought about how that guy thought she might start a fire. Then, as she picked up the firewood, the girl realized that she had a problem because somehow the fire wasn't starting on its own when she put the wood down. Meg began to think about the fact that, first of all, the deal was that she would teach him to read and realized what the hell she was doing here then. The fire still hadn't been lit. The girl realized that the books didn't say anything about it at all, and she couldn't even ask since she didn't have a voice. The girl was already desperate and thought there was nothing she could do. Meg remembered that there was always a fire burning in her room, but everything decided to try again, remembering how Jack would mock her because she couldn't even boil water. She was sure Jack was bound to say something so arrogant. Meg looked at the recently extinguished fire and hoped there was still some spark left. Just as suddenly, a voice came out and noticed that the girl was covered in soot. It was a nice girl who offered her help. Meg looked at her and didn't realize who it was at all. The girl looked at the girl and realized that she hadn't seen her anywhere before. She didn't understand why there were so many strangers in this town and asked the little girl where she was from, but the girl answered nothing. So the girl took her for a humble cutie. Meg, of course, flattered that she thought so about her, but in fact, she just could not say a word. Then the girl realized that the girl was going to start a fire and volunteered to help her. She also added that it had rained yesterday, so the fire was hard to start. The girl reached out her hand for the wood, and in an instant it immediately caught fire. Meg was shocked at what she saw. Suddenly the girl turned to her and told her that there was no need to be afraid at all, 
She also introduced herself by the name Celine. The girl explained that she was an ordinary church nun, but Meg thought that she didn't look like a nun at all. The girl asked the stranger if she thought the town was a little cruel. Selena explained that it couldn't be helped, as the village of Bentley was a pre-front district. Especially on the north-south border it was becoming this very south. You very north. The girl also added that there were a lot of residents and dead at that time. Meg thought it was quite natural in war times, but she didn't understand why all the blame should be shifted to the Northern Army. Selena explained that that was why they were very suspicious of Northerners and outsiders. The girl then asked the stranger to look at it from a different angle. As suddenly, Selena noticed that the water was already boiling and suggested to go together. After a while, the girls entered the tent. Even though it was Meg who was tasked with bringing the boiling water, the pot was in Selena's hands. Everyone immediately cheered when they saw the girl. She explained that she was here unofficially. She was just passing by and heard about what had happened, so she decided to help. Meg stood and just listened to their conversation. It seemed very noisy to her. Suddenly, someone touched her shoulder. It was Jack, and he asked the girl why she was with Selena. After a while, the girl herself came over and explained that they had already gotten to know each other. Selena assumed that Meg was Jack's girlfriend, but the guy explained that she was just his patient. Meg looked at the girl and didn't understand why she wasn't so friendly at all. Selena looked closely at the girl and saw a bandage on her neck. She immediately approached Meg and wondered why she didn't answer that she was sick. She also started apologizing for making the girl worry. Selena still wouldn't let the girl go, but Meg's ears were buzzing with chatter. Jack intervened and covered the girl's mouth with his hand to ask why she was here today. Selena explained that she had already said she was here to help with the supplies. Jack was surprised that Selena had come so quickly. The girl's mood immediately changed, and she hurriedly left because she had delivered everything, and she had to get going. Jack confided to Meg that he thought Selena sometimes acted very suspicious. It seemed to the girl that for some reason she had seen this girl somewhere before. As she moved away from the tent, she realized, as she had expected, that Jack was pretty smart and decided that she should be more careful from now on. Then she pulled off her nun's cap. The two maids standing nearby asked the mistress to go home soon, or they would be in trouble. Celine thought about the fact that this girl reminded her of someone. The girl began to remember her white eyes, as well as her almost silent gait, and even her reaction to the endless stream of words. Still, the girl decided she must have been imagining things. Meg and Jack returned to the tent. The guy reported that he would give first aid, but it was necessary to take medication in time. Jack also informed that it was necessary to get rid of the pus and blood and to take painkillers for relief. Meg couldn't listen to this and just covered her ears with her hands. The guy noticed this and asked the girl why she wasn't listening to him. Meg realized that he covered his ears again out of habit. The girl thought about the fact that even though her hearing was not so sharp anymore, it was still very sensitive when there were a lot of people around. Jack looked at Meg and told her to do it anyway. The girl was shocked that he just wanted to leave her somewhere. The girl ended up cleaning the wounds of wounded people and didn't understand why she was doing it. Granted, she was in no position to refuse anyway. The girl examined the body of the injured person and couldn't believe that the Northman had done this. She assumed that it was some kind of mistake or that in general the Southerners had started the fight first. Suddenly, the injured man asked for medicine and the girl handed him a bottle of healing liquid. In response, the man thanked Miss. But suddenly, he paid attention to her and realized that he had not seen her before in the city. The man immediately began to bombard the girl with questions, but noticed that she did not answer him at all. The man was already angry and assumed the girl was from out of town. Meg prayed that Jack would come as soon as possible and save her from the man's attacks. The man looked at her eyes and realized that this color is not seen in the South and assumed that she was a northerner. Then he pulled out a knife and wanted to attack the girl. The man was very angry and was not going to take the medicine the northerner gave him. The girl was already one step away from death, but another nurse came to the girl's rescue. She told the man to calm down and also explained that this girl was just helping Jack and also assured him that she was also treating the wounded. But the man was angry that they were being helped by a person unknown to them 
He didn't understand how everyone could be so sure that this girl wouldn't suddenly stab them in the back. Just as suddenly, Jack grabbed the man's arm and asked Mr. Cordell to calm down. The man was angry that Jack had gotten there too. But the boy insisted that the man had overreacted. Jack explained that he lived knew what the noise was, even though he'd asked to be quiet. Still, he decided that it was his fault, since he hadn't introduced the girl properly. Jack explained that the girl's name was Meg, and she was from another village. The guy also added that he would be taking care of her for some time, as her throat was injured and she couldn't speak. Jack assured that she is also his patient, so he asked to treat her with respect. The girl was surprised to hear that. Eventually not though, the man apologized to Meg. After that, Jack removed himself again and asked the girls to finish things here. The nurse agreed and asked the guy not to overdo it either. Meg looked at the girl and remembered that she had thought she was suspicious before too. But for some reason, it helped now. Suddenly, the girl apologized to Meg. She explained that Mr. Cordell shouldn't have overreacted either. The girl also added that she had heard from Jack that he had found the girl on the beach. The woman shared that she had a daughter the same age as Meg, so the girl reminded her of her daughter. Meg looked at the broken medicine bottle and remembered that she had done the exact same thing at the time of her seizure. Suddenly, the girl thought Meg said something, but at the same time, the girl was silent. Then the girl admitted that she hoped she could hear her voice soon. Despite the fact that she treated everyone with distrust, there were pleasant words of this woman. Suddenly, the girl was motivated to do their best. Dinner would taste better after work. So she suggested that the girl give it a good try. A while later, the girl just couldn't stand anymore. She felt like she was about to fall, and her whole body smelled like blood. The girl looked at the crowd that had gathered around the fire and thought disappointedly that she had expected it to be much quieter here, but in the end, the drinking started. Meg decided that it was none of her business and remained seated near the tent. Suddenly, Jack came up to her and handed her a glass with some drink. The guy noticed that the girl did not take it, so he decided to bring it to her himself. Meg was a little surprised by this. The guy sat down next to her and thanked the girl for her help and asked if she was having a hard time today. But Meg had it written all over her face. So he decided that she didn't even need to answer. The guy apologized to the girl for making her do the most difficult job. He explained it by the lack of staff and also added that he had no other choice. Jack asked the girl to look at the crowd gathered around the fire and also added that thanks to her, everyone had perked up. Meg decided to try the drink that Jack brought her and surprisingly, it was very warm. After that, the guy suggested the girl to eat one potato, as he assumed that she was very hungry for the whole day. The girl was a little disappointed that she would have to eat potatoes again, but still realized that she had no other choice. Meg took a bite, but what was her surprise that this time the taste was much better than the last time. Then the girl remembered the girl's words about dinner tasting better after a good job. Suddenly, Jack remembered that he would have to go to the market tomorrow. After all, there are still many people who do not know, so he decided that on the way he would tell them about what happened and also promised to look in a few shops for some things. The boy suggested Meg to go along with him. The girl thought about the market and speculated how noisy it would be there. The boy took the girl's silence as a good sign and decided to go to bed. Meg was annoyed as she hadn't even agreed yet. The girl was not very happy that they would have to spend the night here. The next day, Meg felt just plain disgusted. The people around her thought she was a ghost. The girl explained to Jack that the girl just hadn't slept well. One cannot sleep at all on a dirty floor. If everything is fine for the others, then some are definitely some strange. Suddenly, the girl remembered that Jack had warned her that he was going to go to the market, so she asked if she could take Meg away for a while. Later, the girl offered the girl a new dress, when Meg put it on, the girl marveled at how adorable she looked now. The girl realized that this outfit suited the girl much more than she thought. The girl confessed that she had been very concerned about the girl's appearance ever since she saw her. After all, it was impossible for her to keep walking around in such dirty clothes. The girl also added that when she heard that they were going to the market, she ran home in a flash to get the outfit. The girl said that it was originally prepared for her daughter, the girl shared that she never got around to giving it to her. And even though Meg would wear it like this, 
it would honor her memory. Meg assumed that her daughter was dead. Suddenly, the girl asked Meg to keep an eye on Jack, since this kid could easily lose his temper. The girl was a bit shocked as he doesn't seem like someone who loses control at all. But then she remembered that his house was a bit of a mess, and it didn't look like he was used to living in such a mess, but it felt like that house had been abandoned for a long time. Meg decided it was none of her business anyway. She didn't see how she needed to keep an eye on it. The girl thought about how these Southerners reminded her of her parents up north, whereupon she ran up to Jack, and together they hurried to the market. The man returned, and the assistant informed Mr. Skull that everything was ready. The man wondered how brutal everything would be today, after which he ordered that it was time to head north. After Mr. Skull's carriage arrived, everyone started discussing that he was going to visit the north again, and he had been stopping by more often than usual lately because of the festival. The girls marveled at how cool he was, as he had dealt with all the trouble more than once. The butler noticed the commotion of the people and asked the gentleman if he should calm them down. But the gentleman told the butler to just ignore it. Some of the girls said she couldn't believe Mr. Skull was handling so much with one hand. The butler immediately gave them a displeased look. And that's when the girls realized that they had said unnecessary things. The girl then decided that it was worth watching her tongue, for she had literally told the gentleman that he could not perform his duties with one hand. The girl realized that she had said something stupid. The gentleman saw his butler's displeasure, but Skull asked him to leave them alone, as he had long since gotten used to those words. The man noticed that for some reason, he thought of Margaret every time. His partner thought his master had said something, but the man assured him that he had said nothing and advised him to continue on his way. Mr. Skull remarked that it was a very sunny day. The representative of the North and head of the Just's house, Glenn Just's, asked the representative of the South and head of the Rosty house, Skull Rosty, why he had come again. The young man had come because they had finished their conversation about holding a festival together. The man had done it the way the brat had done it, with that face. Skull was well aware that the man hated him, since he was a man from the South, and he was the last person Margaret had been with. But the man wasn't going to listen to his excuses, for he always repeats the same thing. The man was adamant that Skull was the one who killed their daughter, accusing her of being a witch, the man was angry that the brat was making them look like fools and like they didn't know who did it. Skull admitted that he had already said this many times before and had nothing more to add. The man had already lost his temper and ordered the young man, if he was going to keep this up, he'd better keep quiet. The man was already fed up with this mess. He didn't understand how this brat could say anything about a joint festival. He was incredibly angry about Skull accusing his daughter of being a witch and laying all the blame on the North and finally bringing everything to a forced peace agreement. But the man told Skull not to even think about keeping them quiet any further. The man decided that was the end of the conversation and ordered the young man to get out. Skull wondered if the man meant to say that he was declaring a new war. The man didn't really understand what Skull meant. The guy explained that without any evidence or proof, the war would just be a pointless fight. Guy asked the man if he wanted that pointless bloodshed again. The man took this as a threat, but the lad explained that it wasn't that at all. It was just a statement of fact. The young man recalled how many casualties there had been in that war, but the man remembered it perfectly well. Skull tried to explain to Glenn that he was now speaking as Margaret's father, but he was still the Lord of the North. Then he left the room, saying lastly that he hoped Glenn would make the right choice. Suddenly, the young man stopped by the window and saw that a snowstorm had started outside. He realized that now it was the only way to end the war. The boy remembered his father talking to him about how there was something that only he could do. His father had assured him that it was not a mistake but the right thing to do and had asked him not to hesitate. The gentleman was brought out of his musings by the butler informing him that the carriage was waiting. The butler apologized for the carriage arriving earlier than planned, but he had expected the gentleman to be on his way back to the mansion by now. Lad glanced at the weather outside the window and decided that since it was nice, they could stop by the market after a long time and have a look around. The butler admitted that he thought as if the Lord was calmer these days. At this time, Jack informed Meg that they too would soon be at the place. The girl looked around, scrutinizing everything. 
The marketplace of Bentley, a town on the border with the north, was decorated, and the people looked happy. Jack was glad that they had finally arrived. He explained to the girl that Bentley Town Market was the closest to the north. The guy also added that it was smaller than the one to the north, but you could still find everything you needed here. The girl hid behind the young man, and Jack didn't understand what was wrong with her or why she was so afraid of everything. The guy gave up the thought of it being a disease again, but still he was worried why she was so scared. Just as suddenly, Jack was called out by a boy and ran up to him. The child asked Jack why he had come so late when he had promised to be early last time. Jack apologized to the boy and also explained that he had brought a patient with him today. The man and woman also recognized Jack and were genuinely pleased to see him. The woman admitted that because Jack wasn't home, she thought he wasn't coming again. And she also asked the boy how he was doing. The woman noted that the young man seemed to have lost more weight, and she asked if he was eating well. Jack answered in the affirmative. At this time, Meg felt quite uncomfortable being in a huge crowd of people. The girl was worried that they all hated her. She did not understand how these savages could like anyone at all. Jack said that this time they were helped by the fact that Selena was nearby, so they managed to cope. The woman admitted that she was very glad that no one was seriously hurt or killed. Suddenly, the woman noticed a girl behind Jack and inquired about the child. The guy explained that it just so happened to be a patient he was taking care of. Suddenly, the girl took a step back, but she herself did not notice the stone and slipped on it, almost falling. The woman immediately asked Jack if the girl was a northerner. Meg felt the stares on her face, making her incredibly uncomfortable. She was already thinking that all was lost, and if this continued, she would be killed for sure. Jack spoke again. He tried to explain that even though she was a stranger, she was definitely not a northerner. He also told them that Meg had helped them wholeheartedly that time, so he assured that everything was fine, and also added that because of her illness, she couldn't speak, and asked them to take that into consideration too. After a second, people immediately changed their behavior and started to thank the girl for her hard work, suggesting that she was having quite a hard time with her illness. People immediately pounced on the girl asking if she knew anything about the village and if she was hungry. Everyone really wanted to feed her something, but still they welcomed the girl to Bantle, the village of plenty. Meg looked into their joyful faces and was very much surprised, for she had never seen these people smile. She noticed how much they had changed upon learning that she was not a northerner. Even though the girl didn't know what the war was all about, she was still glad that she hadn't gotten caught for if she had, then she wouldn't be in trouble. In the end, the girl was fed to the brim and also collected food for the road. Jack was truly happy. He thought that they were quite lucky, for he did not usually get so much food. The boy explained that it was a kind of gratitude and this town appreciated helping each other. Thus, everyone was grateful to the girl. Jack didn't forget to add that this was on the condition that she wasn't a northerner. The girl immediately spit out her food in surprise, and then looked intently at the girl. Meg simply averted her gaze. The guy noticed three kids nearby and suggested that if she couldn't finish her food, why not share with them? Without a second thought, the girl went and gave them her gifts. Jack began to study the girl, and from her reaction he realized that she was definitely a northerner, but he didn't understand what she was doing here like this. It seemed even stranger to him that if she seemed to be a noblewoman that for some reason no one was looking for her, because they certainly couldn't have passed by their village looking for her. Jack wondered who this girl was. Suddenly someone approached to inquire if he had any medicine to help him sleep. Without further thought, Jack gave an affirmative answer, but only then glanced at the person in front of him, explaining that, just not here. The young man asked, giving him sleep in an instant. Beneath the cloak was Mr. Skull. The servant decided to repeat once more, then to the conversation in the forest, and considered it a total disrespect, as he had been asked for a sleeping pill and should bring it as soon as possible. But Mr. Skull at once covered the butler's mouth to keep him from talking too much. Then, in a polite tone, he asked him to give him some medicine to help him sleep easily. Jack looked at the two men and didn't know what they were doing. The guy asked the two strangers if they were going to use them themselves. Skull admitted that the number of sleepless nights was increasing, whereupon Jack held out a baggie of medication, 
He also said that he hoped the nightmares wouldn't bother him anymore. Then, Mr. Skull and his servant left. Jack watched them go and realized that this man was definitely the heir to the Rosti family. He remembered that his name seemed to be Skull or Small. He had heard of him being seen often in their neighborhood, but he wondered what he was up to. But either way, Jack had come to the conclusion that meeting nobles never boded well, so he wanted Skull gone as soon as possible. When Skull and his assistant left, the boy couldn't stop being angry at the nobleman they'd met, and he didn't understand how anyone could do business like that. Skull admitted that this was the first time he'd ever seen him at the market. The boy asked Mr. Skull if this was the man he was looking for, to which the gentleman gave an affirmative answer. Skull knew that the young man hadn't done anything yet, but he figured he should keep an eye on him anyway. Meg and her children surrounded and didn't realize if it was really necessary to go that far. As suddenly, Mr. Skull was approached, saying that he should not do it himself. To the girl, this conversation had reached her, and she was greatly surprised to hear the name. Meg rushed over to see if it was really who she thought it was, to which the gentleman replied that he would have to see for himself. Meg suddenly picked herself up and ran in the direction she heard it. The boy asked his little sister where she was going in such a hurry. The boys were discussing among themselves that even though everyone always thinks of their own benefit first, so there are many people's thoughts mixed in the case. Meg looked around looking for Skull, but she herself did not notice how she ran past him without even recognizing him. Mr. Skull was explaining to his ward that the truth is blurring, and also that this world is truly unreasonable. Eventually the girl found herself in some empty courtyard. She got all out of breath as she searched, after which the girl, exhausted, fell to her knees. Meg realized that she had made a mistake and thought it was Skull. The girl immediately began to ponder what she would do if it was really him. First, she would have wondered why he had killed her, or perhaps gotten revenge at all by stabbing him in the heart. Still, the girl realized there was nothing she could do anyway. Margaret realized that she still had some regrets, but decided it was just crazy. She decided that now she didn't have the moon to shine on her either. As suddenly, the girl began to remember Jack and only him, how he had stood up for her as well as those Southerners and their happy faces and good attitudes. The girl decided that if she thought about it that way, she wouldn't mind staying here at all. Suddenly, the girl heard someone asking if they could trust her. The girls were discussing among themselves that she seemed to have been brought by Jack to her, and there was nothing they could do about it. But one girl said that he probably didn't know about her background. The men discussed among themselves that she had helped the injured residents, and someone commented that if he wished he hadn't been caught, he would have done the same thing. Everyone was discussing around the fact that Mr. Skull had also been stabbed in the back when he met the witch from the North. Meg heard someone discussing that those rats from the North were just to blame for everything. And what about the rumors that the witch was ugly to begin with? The girl sat in the middle of the street and heard it all. Everyone was happy that the witch ended up dead. Meg realized that she was hearing those horrible sounds again. The girl didn't understand what she was expecting, since no one would come to her aid anyway. She kept repeating to herself that there was no place for her anywhere. That afternoon, the whole of Marianne's nobility came to the meeting. It was a place where under ordinary circumstances, Margaret would never have gone. But now she had to be there, where Mr. Skull is, and also her murderer. The girl reflected on the fact that she didn't even mind listening to all this noise until her ears exploded. The girl rode silently in the carriage, leaning on her arm, looking out the window. She reflected on the fact that today's meeting was really pointless. She was angry because she didn't realize that if they were going to continue fighting like this, then why even bother gathering at all? This made the girl's head ring even more. She thought that they should just all get along, and she didn't understand why they couldn't agree without using daily violence. The girl felt sad because because of this she can't see Mr. Skull very often. The girl remembered his smile and also his image. Just thinking about him made a smile appear on her face. She promised herself that she would definitely visit him next time. She didn't realize what else she could wish for, for she was willing to endure it hundreds of times for such a one. Margaret realized that she was irrevocably in love, but the problem was different. The girl was riding in a carriage, and there were people crowding around the road, shouting for the northerners to leave as soon as possible, because they didn't like the fact that they were oppressing them. The people were sure that the North should leave their country. This noise made the girl have to cover her ears with her hands as soon as possible. 
The girl was just puzzled by the reaction of the Southerners and didn't understand what they had done to them. After all, it was the Northerners who had been protecting them so far from the outside world. Margaret thought it was an unfamiliar favor to them. One of the men saw that the girl had covered her ears in the carriage, and that made him even more angry, as he took it to mean that the Northmen didn't even want to hear them. The crowd of people were racked with hatred, all of them shouting at the Northerners to die and also calling them trash. Someone threw an egg at their carriage. The coachman even had to drive the carriage faster. Suddenly, a child was on the road and started blocking the way. Glenn asked the boy what he was doing there because it was dangerous. But the child explained that he had something to ask. The boy began to address the respected nobles from the north, but the girl had already stopped hearing anything and was slowly passing out. The girl asked her father to go home soon. She was not wearing her face. The father, seeing his daughter's condition, ordered the boy to get lost and the coachman to go faster. The boy still did not give up and begged the nobles to stop and answer his question. Margaret could not stand it any longer, and every sound was an unbearable pain in her head. Now the girl wondered if she had been so badly mistaken that she was now being pursued day after day. After all, Mr. Skull had accused her of being a witch and made himself look like a hero. Margaret was sure that all of them would surely someday find out that she was a northerner and reveal her true nature. So the girl decided that she could not stay here for long, or they would kill her again. The girl was afraid that someone would try to do that to her again. This feeling of fear was suffocating her. The girl had the familiar feeling of the whole world going dark in front of her eyes. The girl realized that she wouldn't be able to do anything again this time, so she decided that there was nothing to think about such things. She decided that it didn't matter what happened. She thought about how she should have told everything right away, and then she would have felt better. Margaret realized that she was just slowly sinking and didn't even think about fighting, however, as she always did. The girl resigned herself to the fact that in any case there was nothing she could do, as suddenly there was a voice saying that the girl would regret it. Margaret began to think about the fact that she had a similar feeling then. Later, the girl was brought to her senses by Jack. A little earlier in Jack's shop, Guy was pleased to have managed to sell quite a lot today. The guy assumed it was because there was one person here who had bought quite a lot. Jack was pondering that this money should be enough for a while when suddenly someone called out to him. It was a group of children. Jack immediately asked them what was wrong. The children explained that their white sister had gotten sick and had run away. Jack realized that they meant Meg and immediately asked what was wrong with her. Only now did the boy notice that he couldn't see her anywhere. The children told him that their little sister had given them chicken kebabs and then they had woven flowers into her hair. The boy said that all of a sudden she jumped up and disappeared somewhere. He was so very surprised when he heard about it. The boy asked the children what it meant and where the girl had gone. The kids told him that she just ran away without saying anything. The child pointed out the direction the girl ran off in. The man realized that this was a problem since she didn't even know the way. Jack stepped out from behind the counter and told the boy to go with him and ordered everyone else to watch the bench. The rest of the kids wanted to go with Jack too, but the boy patted them on the head and apologized, explaining that they would have to ask them for a favor. The kids agreed to help Jack since he was asking. In return, the guy thanked them. A little later, the girls saw Jack again and asked where the white sis had gone. The boy assumed that she had turned that way and headed for the square, so the boy went that way as well. The girls were surprised that this white sis wasn't even from their village, and Brother Jack still takes care of everyone equally, even though he sometimes looks like he wants to cure everyone. Jack had already searched and looked through every corner, but he still couldn't find the girl anywhere. The sun was starting to set and Jack was still looking for Meg. The guy began to shout and call for the girl, but realized that even if she heard him, she wouldn't be able to answer. The guy was worried that his patient was in trouble or something had happened to her in general. Suddenly, Jack was recognized by a man selling fabrics. The guy immediately approached him, and the man asked him how he was doing, as they had not seen each other for a long time. It was Mr. Nathan. Jack only apologized to the man and explained that he was looking for someone right now, and asked if the man had seen anyone here with white hair like the wool of a sheep. The man immediately began to wonder if he had seen someone similar. He then confessed that he had never seen such a person. The man advised Jack that if he wanted to find her, he'd better act fast. The lad did not understand why. The mister at this told him that strangers staying at the Bentley Market had started disappearing a lot lately. 
The man also added that there were some who disappeared in front of his eyes without paying, but a couple of times there were also those who wanted to purchase goods and afterwards conditionally dissolved. Jack admitted that the second one did seem strange. Mr. Nathan thought about the fact that they'd decided to cheat first, but after all, they didn't even acquire anything with them. The man also added that this had happened once or twice. He assumed that it was the witch's tricks again. But he didn't see how that was possible if the witch was already dead. Jack was about to despair when a boy called out to him. Jack asked him if he had any luck finding Meg, but the boy admitted that no one had seen her. The boy inquired of Jack's brother what they would do, but the boy was determined to keep looking, even though he was already out of breath and tired. The man himself did not understand why he was trying so hard to find her, because she could be a threat to the village. Besides, many were against the nobles. The guy decided that he should just leave her alone. Suddenly, something caught his eye. Jack looked at the flower in the boy's hands and asked where he got it. The boy admitted that he just thought that his little sister must be scared right now and assumed that she would feel better if she saw the flower. Jack was in agreement with his train of thought. Jack patted the child on the head for thinking about such things and suggested that the child was all grown up now. Then he said he'd have to try harder and look for Meg. Jack reflected on one piece of advice his mom always said. The woman asked her son if he knew what was more important than any external wounds. She then pointed her finger at his heart, explaining that the most dangerous wounds were those that were located there. The boy was upset, as he did not know how to operate, but the mom clarified that this was not what she was talking about at all. So the mother decided to ask her son how he would feel if he lost his favorite sword Excalibur. The boy realized that he would be very sad if he lost it, since it was given to him by his father, and he was the only one like that. The mother began to continue to explain to her son that if he saw another sword, it would remind him of the past, and then he would be sad again, thinking he would never find it again. The mother asked her son if he understood a little more. The woman explained to the boy that it meant a heart wound, also a smoldering ember that reminded him of it. Once ignited, it could never be extinguished, and it would take a long time to get rid of it completely, especially if it held precious memories. So Mother explained to Jack that he needed to very slowly and carefully accept that it was only ashes, and gradually carry it over. Mother assured Jack that it was up to him exactly how to deal with the wounds. Jack, remembering Meg, thought of it as a similar smoldering ember. The guy remembered the girl's nightmare of making her tear her neck, as well as her habit of covering her ears. The guy remembered Meg's habit of getting lost and not knowing what to do in large crowds. And then the boy decided for himself, clenching his fists, that as long as he was breathing, he would save as many people as possible, and began to ponder where he would go if he were in her place. Suddenly something caught the guy's attention. Jack was looking at the fabric counter. He remembered the boy's words that Meg might get better if she saw a flower. So Jack picked up a piece of small fabric. At this time, the girl had already begun to come to her senses. In front of her eyes was Jack, who was trying to normalize her breathing, advising her to keep breathing deeply. Instinctively, the girl began to repeat after him. After that, the young man began to wonder if she was all right. Jack took the girl's hands and realized that they were just ice cold, after which he asked Meg what she suddenly ran to look for. The girl looked at Jack and this baby and thought about the fact that her executioner was here again. She was worried that this kid recognized her, but she decided that she shouldn't jump to conclusions because who knows what would happen next. The girl was still hearing very blurred. For some reason, she was worried that she looked like Margaret now. Meg decided that it was very much like her, for she was always covering her ears, running away or falling down. The girl realized it was obvious and she could get caught at it, and then the Southerners would kill her again. The girl pulled her hand out of Jack's palm and decided she needed to run with all her might. She was incredibly scared of dying again, Margaret decided that if no one came to save her, she would survive on her own. After all, she had no one to trust in this world anyway. But Jack never gave up trying to get through to Meg. Among all the noise around the girl still heard his voice. The guy hugged the girl and asked her to calm down, and told her that she would be all right. Jack admitted that he didn't know what she had been through. But he promised that she would be fine, because he promised that he would help her. Which meant he would honor his word. The girl looked at Jack and thought about how everyone looked at her and called her weird. Most people thought she was too sensitive or that she ignored them altogether. But no one knew that was simply not the case. Suddenly, Jack handed the girl a gift and tied a cute ribbon on her head. 
Jack told her that his mom used to say that no matter what choice you make, no matter what the outcome, everything is inevitable. So the boy thought that perhaps their meeting was somehow preordained. The girl pondered Jack's words and didn't understand what the reason was then that she had come back to life. Margaret realized that at least back to that time she could never go back. But she did not understand why everyone recognized her as a witch. The girl assumed that it was because in her life she had achieved nothing with her own hands. And Margaret just wanted to change something for the last time. The girl began to ponder what she could change by taking this chance and came to the conclusion that she was no longer Margaret. The girl reflected on the fact that Jack was not angry or ignoring her at all. Besides, he also noticed her pain. The girl assumed that he was watching her. Suddenly, Meg thanked Jack. The guy was a little shocked as he didn't expect to hear that. The girl thanked the young man for before and now. As suddenly they both noticed that the girl's voice came back to her and now she could talk quietly. At the same time the boy who was watching all of this, the boy assumed that the two were dating. Though he didn't know for sure, but either way, he was glad that everything ended well. He then handed his sister a flower, for he had wanted to give it to her to calm her down, but now it was a congratulatory gift. The girl held out her hand, and the image of Skull holding the bouquet immediately popped into her memories. But despite her painful memories, the girl accepted the little flower anyway and thanked the boy. Meg decided that she needed to take her time and think it over carefully. She wanted to reflect on why her lover had betrayed her and also why she was able to come back to life. That was her next step. Skull's partner saw that he wasn't giving up trying at all and suggested that it was time to give up already. The guy didn't understand why the northerners were ungrateful that the witch who had set their lands on fire had been killed. But Skull had no answer to that question, since he himself had become the murderer of his beloved by making her look like a witch after her death. The boy resented the fact that the northerners didn't want to admit it and didn't like being criticized by those they had always looked down on. Skull replied to the guy that facts don't matter at all, and they just have to do what they have to do. The maid greeted Mr. Skull and also informed him that guests were waiting for him in the parlor. The boy was slightly surprised, as he wasn't expecting guests at all. Wearied by the cakes, sat in Celine's chair. She was glad that she could finally see Mr. Skull. But the boys weren't too happy to see the girl. But Selina was not angered at all, but rather laughed. Mr. Skull asked the girl what brought her here this time. This girl's name was actually Miss Leona. She was the future ruler of Regina. The girl gobbled a cookie and inquired if it was so strange that she could come here just to see her. After all, she was Mr. Skull's fiance. The girl informed that she was not here to torment him. She also added that she had just met someone who excited her. The young man inquired as to who had been able to excite her. The girl explained that she had seen someone like Margaret in the village of Bentley. The young man's heart nearly dropped at his heels after hearing this, so surprised was he. Leona compared Margaret's unique habits that manifested when many people were around, namely her sensitiveness to noise. The girl realized that that girl behaved in exactly the same way. In addition, they were united by a rare eye color. Then the young man asked his bride-to-be what she wanted to say. The girl noticed the young man's piercing gaze and asked him not to look at her like that, because she only said it because it bothered her, and she was sure he cared too. Skull admitted that there was a lot he might not know, but he didn't think that Miss Leona cared that much. The girl admitted that she liked Miss Margaret. The boy was surprised to hear that, and he didn't understand what Leona meant. The girl explained that if you say something like that now, you will be criticized immediately but she could still hear the sound of her singing a long time ago. The girl admitted that it only happened once, but she will never forget that song. Those memories make her wonder if that's really what a witch can sound like. Mr. Skull advised Leona not to tell anyone about it, because if she continued, Miss Leona's reputation would be ruined. The girl realized that she was really overreacting and agreed to do as he advised. The girl was about to leave the young man, but lastly told him that the man's name was Meg. When Miss Leona had left the room, the maid asked her why she had spoken of Margaret to Mr. Skull. The girl admitted that it was no big deal, just to throw the dog some bones. She just couldn't look at the face of a man who had no way of forgetting his dead lover. The girl found his forever frozen love pathetic. Leona realized that they couldn't handle something like that. The partner noticed his lord's mood and suggested that if he was worried about what he had said, it was worth finding out. Mr. Skull thought he was getting on his nerves too much, so it was better to get them out right away. 
The girl resented the fact that she would have to teach writing to children as well, but Jack thought it was better for everyone to learn together. The girl was angry because, by the way, it was different from their arrangement. But Jack thought it was the least of it and suggested they get to the good stuff. The people around them looked at them with surprise and wondered what it was they were doing. Jack explained that they were trying to learn how to write. People were surprised that this girl could write since Jack had recently said that she didn't even have a voice. As suddenly the boy said that his little sister had a voice, but the girl immediately covered his mouth with her hands. Jack asked the girl to listen carefully and told her that it wasn't a problem with her throat that she couldn't speak. The guy explained that actually her throat was more than fine and it wasn't that badly hurt. The problem itself was inside, not outside. The girl wasn't quite sure what he meant. So Jack asked the girl if she had ever burned herself on people. Meg instantly became uncomfortable after this question. Memories immediately came over the girl. She ended up remaining silent, but Jack realized it was an affirmative answer. Jack admitted that he had suspected, and he thought that might have been the reason, and also warned the girl that if she didn't deal with it, this sort of thing would continue to happen. So suggested that he keep what she might be saying a secret for the time being. After all, if they hurried, they could only make things worse, because there were people who could unknowingly do harm. Jack confessed that in fact, after the war, all the people in the village are like that. Meg became frightened. The guy explained that just because they shared the same pain didn't mean they could understand each other. Jack asked the girl not to worry, as he promised that he would help her. However, for that, he needs to know more about her. After that, the guy asked the girl to tell about herself. But Meg realized that she couldn't tell him everything as it was, so she was left to gather scraps of the story. Meg gathered her thoughts and told him that she was the daughter of a nobleman. However, there were people who took away his property, and so she ended up on the street. The girl was a little ashamed that she lied, but decided that lying for good was not so bad. But the people around her heard a boy who said that the girl had taught the noble children, and then she was kicked out. And she was so shocked that she couldn't speak. Meg immediately went up to Jack and ordered him to explain himself now. The guy told her that there was nothing left for him to do but explain it to everyone. Just at that moment, a girl walked by. She listened to the two men's altercation and decided that this was her chance. The red-haired girl said that if Meg could read, she could do it, namely a theater performance or a play. The girl was so glad, for she thought she would be able to do nothing but watch all her life, and she couldn't believe that she would be able to go on stage herself. Meg didn't understand why she was so happy, because she hadn't even said she was going to participate. The red-haired girl immediately apologized and introduced herself as Carol. She also added that her dream is to become an actress. Suddenly, Meg had a feeling of deja vu. The girl suggested that since Meg had lived abroad, she might not know, but there would soon be a joint North and South festival. The girl said that at it, each village had to show its best result, and the winner got a big prize. That's why Carol got the idea to create a performance. If they use this scenario, they will take the first place. The girl told that this script is based on the real story of the origin of the festival, namely the story of the hero Mr. Skull and the witch Margaret, and the civil war between the North and the South. When Meg heard about it, she felt uneasy as the girl realized that this story was about her death. It was then determined by casting that Carol would play the witch Margaret, and the character of Skull would be played by Jack. The main person in charge would be Meg.